Hi everybody, it's nearly five o'clock somewhere here in, uh, in uh, where are we? Newton, Kansas. Uh, <laughs> welcome to live stream lessons for Tropical Shores. And today we're going to do the song Sea Jam, which is an original. I want to welcome my uh, daughter Jamie into the meeting here today. I'm calling hey it everybody. a meeting. It's a meeting today. It's a new term. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> we're, uh, we're just uh, waiting for a few more people to join. And I uh, want to welcome everybody. Uh, Jamie, what's the latest out in North Carolina? How's the weather? Uh, a gorgeous weekend. Um, yeah, nothing too crazy going on around here, just relaxing. And uh, I was just thinking about Sea Jam because uh, I'm working with my band students at my school to uh, do a little bit of improv with the blues scale. Um, and I actually taught them C Jam, like the letter C, which is a blues tune, um, and it's got two notes in it. So I, I usually teach that to my students as we're working through the blues scale and and doing some improv, so this is perfect um, to work on for us. Yeah, it's a, you know, this song is very repetition. In fact, it is the same four chords the entire time. So if you get lost on the melody, you just join up somewhere else, because it's, it's all the same, and you can do a lot of improv in this, on this song. Uh, Jamie, we, we talking earlier, we were talking about this song being in cut time. I don't have a, I don't have it on my board or anything, but I wanted to draw your attention to it. It's in cut time, and. Uh, yes, looks it, like this. It's a C with the with the line through it like this, which is often it, people say, "What is that?" I actually people usually say, "What is the C for?" They'll look at the beginning, and sometimes at the beginning of the music, it'll say C, which actually stands for common time, yeah. which normally, uh, most often, you'll see music in four four, which is common time. You see that four over the four, so, and the, that's right. The four on top means uh, four beats per major. The the bottom one is a code for quarter notes get one beat. Now, this particular mm -hmm. song is in cut time, so what they do is they cut it in half. And kids that I used to teach would say, yeah, two, four. And I go, no, no, they got to cut both numbers. It's two, two. So it's two beats to a major, and, and a half count. note gets a count. Because it's a half note, is a, the two is a code for a half note. I don't know why they couldn't just say it, but music is a mystery. So That's uh, right, I love that. I'm gonna say it's a special code. That's perfect, yes. People used so to say- So you count it a little bit differently, and I like to draw the, I like to draw attention to the fact that cut time, when you see that at the beginning of the music, it changes the feel of the music. Right. Yes, you do count it technically a little bit different, but focus more on how the music feels. Yeah. Um, and so here's an example, and I don't have a good song, but I'll say, okay, instead of going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then I start to do the big beats of one, two, one, two, four, one, two, one, Two. And so cut time kind of just changes the feel. It's similar, like if you read cut time really fast in 4-4, four, four, it would be the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so that may sound confusing. Obviously, I teach these lessons over many, many weeks to the students. But um, the big thing is it changes the feel of the, of the notes. Yes, perfect. Uh, so while we're kind of waiting for people to come online, uh, we do want to talk about April 8th, which is not a Sunday night, it's, it's a Thursday, and we're going to do a special, uh, a special performance or a special uh, class that night, if you will. And uh, Jamie's actually going to be here in Newton or Haven, whichever we're in, Newton, Kansas, and uh, here in Basement Studios. And uh, uh, we're going to actually do the class together, and we're going to do a lot of call and response, uh, improvisational things the entire time. So uh, we want to encourage you interactive. to... Interactive. It's interactive. I like that. It's going to be interactive. Everybody, BYOP, bring your own pan. You want to really have your pan set up ready for this lesson um, on the 8th because you're going to want to play along as you watch um, either the, the replay of this video or watch along live because we're going to play, you play, we play, you play. I thought BYOP was bring your own puppy because I have mine out. I don't really have one. Oh. <laughs> well, that would be funny though yeah. if I did. Uh, let's see. So. Uh, let's let's get started playing this song. I'm gonna just play through it. This this song uh, actually goes on for five complete minutes, and the reason it is, uh, I used to use this as a warm up song for my gigs. Meaning it would be the first song I could check volumes, I could read the room. Uh, it just goes on and on. I don't have to worry about um, I don't have to worry about uh, the melody. You know where am I at in the melody because it's all the same. I could just do anything in the key of C and be okay. Uh, so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. I want you to make sure that you have the music. It's at bradshoresmusic.com. Go to the Seal Drum page, download it there. And again, uh, we, if you can, leave us a small donation. This week's donation we've chosen to give to the Alzheimer's Association, and uh, Woody 
cause, and uh, uh, whatever you can do for us would be great. Let's see, uh, so we're going to play it. I was thinking there's something else I was going to tell you, but first I want to do the little roadmap. If you have both sheets available, now they're not, we don't have them on the, on the, uh, on the window here, but uh, you have your sheet one on the third line has a sign. That little S thing is also called senu, is the real word, it's the sign. When you get to the second page, uh, at the end of it's the third third line from the bottom, it'll say DS Alcoda. Go back to that senyo, that sign, and then uh, take the detour uh, on measure, um, looks like 56, to go to the coda. And then you'll see the coda kind of looks like a bull, the bullseye with a box around it. So that's the roadmap. But again, in this particular song, you can mix and match melodies because it's it's very, uh, it just does the same thing all the time. Wonderful writing, I would, uh, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> What is your intro? And then pick up into the second line, the third line. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, we've talked about this before, how people will hear that and go, oh, I know that song, and, and that's pretty clever. It's all about, you know, just adding musical interest to your, to your solos and things. Now down here, this isn't necessarily a quote, but it's a really good gig lick, and it's just the same, it's repetition of that lick three times. And repetition is an important tool when you're doing improv. For instance, here's that lick. It's E, F, F sharp, G. I like to do it like three times. Three times seems to be the charm on that. So um, that's another lick. So speaking of gigs, um, we're starting to have some gigs again. So uh, Jamie, I know you just, uh, you had a couple. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, I, uh, I got booked uh, for several weeks at a brewery, um, just downtown Charlotte, uh, along the light rail. It's really awesome. It's really good beer. I have one sitting over there. I'm not gonna drink it right now. Wait. Um, but yeah, it's um, really made me, I had a, like a list. I did all the gig tips that we have been talking about because I have made a list. I made sure I, my contract was updated, all these things that we've been, been advising. So um, I have a gig tip. I have two gig tips. Okay. So the wait, first wait, one is- Wait, wait, time. For, I had to oh, ask oh, you. No. I had, no, I had to ask you about the beer, the beer gig. That place is hopping. It's oh. hopping. Like that's right. Pops. That's, you got it. Okay. That's good. That's a good. Like, I'll be here all. I'll be here till now. That's a bad joke. <laughs> oh man, yes. I was trying to think of one, but I couldn't think of one. Yes, it's all. Uh, no, nope. Not even gonna try. Okay. So, um, <laughs> gig my tip. gig tip for this particular gig is outside it's probably like three quarters to an acre of just like open space um, and so the mistake I've made for several years is to not mic your pan and I think that was a gig tip earlier but like super duper important to mic your pan when you're outside in a big expanse of space because the the level is just not as good if you don't have ampli amplification for your pan um, and it, it just makes the mix sound so much better that it's coming out of your speakers and the other tip that I literally uh, I just made a brand new um, banner. I made a brand new magnet for my pan. Is have a Venmo tip jar because turns out I'm I'm an older millennial. So it, you know, so anybody 30 or under doesn't really carry cash that much. Um, so this particular brewery has a lot of 20 somethings, um, and so they were like, "Hey, do you have a Venmo? We don't have any cash." And I was like, "Sure do." So luckily, I have a Venmo, but it wasn't very well advertised. So yeah. if you're gonna gig somewhere public, um, make it well known. If you don't have a Venmo, get one, because everybody has, lots of people have Venmo, um, and make that very well known that you accept Venmo uh, tips. So definitely gonna do that when I go back on Tuesday, because I, I made like pretty good tip money just from Venmo, and I, you know, I didn't have to sort any cash, I didn't have to touch anything, I didn't, you know, it was perfect. Well, while I'm giving my gig tip, why don't, can you get your uh, your signage and stuff? Maybe you could show it to them. Oh, okay. So, what? I'll try. Okay. It'll just be like showing on my phone on the camera, but I can show you. Yes, okay. I'll pull up my well, that, I didn't realize that, but that's good. Um, okay, my gig tip is um, I have sometimes agents or people will call me or larger events will call and say, hey, we need you to do this. And they'll say, how much do you charge? Sometimes I learned that if you say, well, give me an idea of your budget. And they'll say, well, you know, we have like four or $500. I'll go, well, it's 475 or something. So it's just, I think that's kind of a, a sort of used car dealership. But you know, if you said 150 and they're going, wow, we saved a whole bunch of money. So I, I have used that before. Like, well, give me an idea of, you know, what your budget is and I'll see what I can do and how many people I should bring this and that. So that's a good, good gives, it's a good thing to say. Uh, Andrea, thank you for signing up. I was talking about uh, the song Sea Jam, and it is a very, in my my own opinion, it's a very uplifting song. When you hear it, people just get happy, and they get happy when they hear the pan anyway, but it's a very uplifting song, and uh, I, I agree, springtime is a really good time to play the pan, and it just brought it right in. All right. Um, Can anybody see this? Oh, that looks good. So this will be a, on a banner that hangs off of the table that I have, and I have my website, my logo, where I'm, at, you know, a, ideas of where to hire me, and then Venmo tip jar, and then at my at my tip, at my Venmo. So that's gonna be my banner, and then I also just made a magnet with my um, my logo, which is very similar to my dad's logo, yes. We have the same logo <laughs> for them. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the magnet on my pan so that I, I've been struggling with signage for a lot of years, and it's hard 
you know, I don't have anything, you know, it's hard to hang. You don't know where, you're always at a different venue. And so um, magnets, I'm hoping it doesn't change the sound. I think we talked about that last time. So I'll, I'm gonna kind of uh, experiment with that, but that's my plan for now. We also, and we're noticing your shirt is really nice too with the, with the logo on there. Dun, 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 dun. That's right. It's really lightweight. It's great. That's something else you can do is wear your logo so that people know who you are. Something else I've been thinking about doing is um, ordering like little sunglasses, little um, little trinkets to put out so that if people tip or give give money that they can take something with them, like a little, you know, a cute little something inexpensive that they feel like, you know, they can have. Sunglasses are a big thing, especially at this brewery where there's no shade. So hmm. anyway, just all ideas for, for y'all as you're thinking sure. about using them. Um, I have a new, I had this idea very late, I'm sorry that I didn't put this in the packet or in the uh, file, but I have something called gig licks, and or the, this is the lick sheet, and I noticed uh, that there's a couple things I wanted to tell you about. Uh, one is, if you'll look closely at the very top line, it's called a passing tone. Now, the chord is C, E, G, but you see there's an F in there, and you go, well, that's not in the key, or that's not in the chord, that's actually just a passing tone, and the, the lick goes... <laughs> And then it goes on C, there's a passing tone. Uh, on the D, it's a passing tone. So if you're thinking, I can only play things in the key in the chord, yes, that's true, but if you want to stray around sometimes, you can use a passing note that goes between two chord tones, like C and E, or E and G. And then the second line, I have some lower neighbors, which are notes that are right below the ones uh, you're playing. Like here, I'm playing the E and G, and I go to F sharp and D sharp, which also is E flat. That's a good lick right there. And then the other one. And a quote. And, oh, it's and also a quote yellow, bird. yellow bird. Yeah, it's yellow bird. Mm -hmm. I'm glad I played that right. Okay, so the other one is C and uh, the D, it's a V and D sharp. So you have the first one, or it's written this way. Second one is you can do the E and G. You could do them back and forth, or you could just do one. Sorry. Make sure you come back. If you go, if you use that lower neighbor, make sure and come back. If you don't, it, it'll be a disaster. But those are great licks. And then there's uh, the last line is another upper. It's an upper neighbor, meaning uh, E to F to E. I'll do it slow. E to F. in Kansas and I think that's something that um, I don't know if we did growing up but I just we got some new windscreens for my for my mic because this, this is a windscreen here. this is a windscreen right here on this on this mic that's you how you know it's expensive 
You know it's expensive when it has a windscreen. I don't know. It's just. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So, okay. Well, thank you, Andrea, for telling us. Um, let's see where we're at. Where are we? We're at 19. Where are we doing? Good. Um, Pet Brian. Big Tips. We got Bobble, Bobble Brad. Brad. We got No Questions Yet. Okay. Uh, licks. Mm -hmm. Playing. Uh, I love that lick too. The one that you showed on, um, the, I think you just did E. I come at it from two half steps lower. So I add D and C sharp or E flat. And I go on licks where um, it's repetitive. Sometimes I like to go slow to fast. So if you're going to use the one that you listed. Hey, play, so play softer, Danny. Sorry? Play softer. I'll play softer. Let's get Yep. Or I practice those licks so that you can play them really fast and it sounds really impressive when you in actuality you weren't really trying that hard. You were just playing five or six notes, um, but you learned to play them really fast and it's like, ooh, especially if they're the right notes that sound good in that in that scale or in that song. Right. Uh, there's one more lick before we do the play along that I wanted to do. Uh, the, the key is the here. So we're playing. I like this lick. It's A and E flat. And it's A, it's, it's high A to uh, lower E flat. It's a, a hint of the blues scale, but not a whole lot of it. See how my hands are low. See where my placement of my hands is? Not this, but this. I love to do this. I love to go up the scale. E, F, F to G. So you go. That is a good lick. I'm gonna use that. Thank you, Danny. All right. Uh, looks like I think I just stole it. You, I stole it from you, and you stole it back to me. That's what it's all about. Is um, that's my favorite thing about playing, and especially if you're somewhere where, well, anywhere public, really, and you watch for musicians when you do stuff like that. Chopsticks is another good one that I like to play, because uh, a lot of people know chopsticks, so I'll sneak that in there, you know. Yeah. And I'll sneak in chopsticks and then look around to see who's really listening right. for, you know, who catches that kind of stuff, and you can tell... You can always tell if there's a musician watching you, because uh, when I go to see music, I'm like very intense, and I watch the drummer very, you know, they can tell that I'm 
you know, I'm watching them. And right. so that, that's the fun part for me now that, you know, when you get to a level where, um, you know, it's, it's more fun because you can kind of look up while you're playing and you know what you're doing and you're looking for, for that interaction. That's part of the fun of being, being a professional musician. Right. Well, yeah, Jamie, they're, they're saying you're having a little bit of uh, issues with your pan. It's just, it's just loud. And it's oh, well, I will not play it anymore. Okay, sorry well, about that. <laughs> it's not for that reason. I just, the sound is always, uh, it's always a crapshoot on the yeah. scene. Kind of, but it's, well, if you tune in on the 8th, hopefully nothing bad will happen because we will be in the same room. We'll have to do this Zoom madness yeah. with, my, with my headphones, and it's going to be so cool. So everybody, hopefully... Um, remember to tune on, on the, it yeah. is the 8th, right? It is. Right thing. Yeah, the yes, Zoom, the if you don't know, we use Zoom to pull Jamie in from North Carolina, and it, it's very picky about the sound, so for any, anything can happen. So thank you for your yeah. patience. We, we really appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying mm -hmm. it. Uh, we're going to do the play along, and because it is um, long, I'm not, I'm not going to play five minutes worth of songs. I'm just going to play uh, one time through the head, which is also a jazz term for the melody. And I'm going to do a little improv, and I'd like you to improv with me on your end. Just get your pan out, and then we'll, we'll do some improv together. Be sure to try to experiment, and also um, use pentatonic scale, use uh, quotes, use anything that, that works. I was just looking at the improv licks on the, seat, on the bottom of the theory, but uh, there's, some, there's some great licks there, too. I'm going to quickly run through those. Uh, this one is the first one on the gig, I'm sorry, the theory sheet. It's a uh, second line from bottom. Here's again slow. And then the third major. And then the bottom line, we have one, two, here it comes again, first two majors. Another one where there's repetition, I'll do it slowly. It's the last two measures. Here it comes again. Very slowly. So those those licks are built on the pentatonic scale, although on measure uh, second second line in on the last line, there is an F sharp, so it hints at the blues scale. Again, uh, on the blues scale, you can use it, but it gets very, it really gets very um, heavy after a while. So mix it in with the pentatonic and all that other stuff. All right, we are going to do the play along. Thank you. 
all of the things I talked to you about, or that we talked about, I mean, I used the improv lick there for a while on the bottom of the theory sheet. I also used what was on the board. I messed up one note on I got rhythm, so apparently I have a little bit of rhythm. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I hope that helps. Uh, Jamie, anything from your side? It does. I, I'm excited to do the, the play along because when I play along with you, I pick up stuff. And maybe that's not true for everybody, but you know, we're going to level the play along, the interactive next time um, to, to where we'll, we'll show you the notes. You know, you play along because I pick up stuff. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going to use that next time. And um, so as you're hopefully getting ready to gig or, or go out and play in public, you can, you can steal some stuff because that's what it's all about. It, borrowing, yeah. borrowing. But you know that's that's just like when you hear a good joke and you go, oh, that's such a good joke. I want to go tell it. It's the same thing. With that's that. right. You hear a good look and you go, wow, I, I could use that. And the really good thing about it is, is lots of times you can use them in other keys. So you have to figure out mm -hmm. how, how do I translate that lick to the key of F now. That's why it's so important to know mm -hmm. a little bit of theory. You go, well, if I start on the, the third note of the C scale, the third note of the F scale is A. So that lick starts on A in that key. I know we're getting off of the track a little bit, but you know, stealing licks and improv is all a part of being a better. Um, performer, musician, it's just fun, you know, it's just fun to try, and, and, you know, we had some clams, too, we had some bad notes, more than I'd like to admit, but, you know, um, it happens, so, I just want to encourage you to try, and, uh, you know, I always say, what's the best way to learn to play golf, be a better golf, play golf, so go out and play. And in jazz, you're only one note away from the right note, that's what the, that's what we always say, you're, you're only one note away from the right note, so, just play. That's right. So I want to thank you guys yeah. for, for dropping in and, and hearing us. Um, I always want to thank our, our producer, our professional sound <laughs> tech producer, the person who keeps us on the straight and narrow. And that is, of course, Mr. Mm -hmm. Geniality is here with us. And uh, she says hello to everybody. Or she would if she... Oh, yeah, okay. So um, <laughs> I guess that's it for this time. I want to encourage you to, uh, to get with us on the 8th of May. Uh, sorry, 8th of April at 5 o'clock. It's not a Sunday, but I'll, I'll be sending out some reminders. There's our, uh, our donations if you like to do that. There's that Venmo right there. So we really appreciate you guys hanging in there and helping us, and I hope that you're getting something out of it. And uh, looking forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, see you next time. Thanks, Bye. everybody.